Random Forest is one of the most popular and powerful machine learning algorithms. It is a type of ensemble machine learning algorithm called bootstrap aggregation, or bagging in short. It uses the majority vote from tens of thousands of single decision trees to classify a target in classification problems, or most of the time it takes the average of those decision trees' prediction to come up with a numeric number in random forest regression problems. If you haven't seen my decision tree video, I put the link in the description below. It is so versatile that it could be used to recommend your favorite product on e-commercial websites, to push your favorite article to your newsfeed, your credit card marketing mails in your mailbox may be the result of a tree-based algorithm such as Random Forest. All right, the dataset we're going to use today is the Titanic dataset from Kaggle. All right, look at the dimension of it, about 900 times 12. Look at the summary, okay, little brief summary, and look at the first six records of it. Okay, we have passenger ID, we have target variable, survived or not, their fair, tech, fair class, their name, their sex, their age, some of them are NAs, and their number of siblings or spouse, the number of parents or children, and their ticket specifics, their fair amount, their cabin, and their embarked, which is one of the three um, letters. It's either S, C, or Q. All right. So before we train the model, let's plot some histograms and tables. Just briefly take a look of the data set. All right, so the zeros and ones break down. As you can see, the majority of people died from that accident. Now breaking down by class, as you can see, the first class passengers did have a higher survival rate than the other classes. In terms of sex, if you're a female, then your chance of survival is higher than if you're a male. Now next is a histogram side by side plotting the relationship of age and survivorship. So from this graph, if you're a toddler, meaning you're a very young age, then your chance of survivorship is higher. Otherwise, then I don't see a very significant trend. All right, let's keep plotting. Okay, so this is the number of your sibling or spouse, and I don't observe a very obvious trend here. Preferably, if you have more siblings or spouse, then your chance of survival is higher, but I don't know. All right, let's take a look at the parents and children. Same here. If you have one or two, um, parents or children then then your chance is higher but it's not guaranteed it's just a brief look all right next another histogram side by side reflecting the relationship between your fair amount and whether you survive and the horizontal line is your fair amount as we can see here there are some outliers here but we don't treat outliers in this episode as expected the majority of people pay a very low amount the higher amount you're paying the chance of your survival is higher just by a tiny little bit our, our last but not least our embarked column okay there is there are two records that are without this value they're blank all right so we need to replace NA with blank, otherwise the algorithm will not work. So we use this as apply function to check how many records are NAs. Now we replace NA with blank. And also, this is very important, you need to turn your target variables into a factor so that the algorithm know it's a classification problem instead of a regression problem. Okay, last but not least, let's throw away our passenger ID row because it's just a number of ascending numbers. It doesn't add any value to our algorithm. Okay, load our library random forest. Let's train the model. Let's briefly look at the model. Random forest, classification, number of trees, 500. Number of variables tried at each split is three. 
out of bag estimate of error rate 16%. And this is the confusion matrix. Right, the diagonal shows the correctly predicted records, while the off diagonal shows how many records the model got it wrong. So the overall, the, the error rate is about 17%. Now let's plot the error rate. As we can see, after a hundred number of trees, the error rate pretty much got st stabilized at about 16, 17%. All right, last but not least, let's plot the feature importance using a little customized function, which I will not go into detail here. While it's kind of expected that sex, fair amount, and age collectively decide whether you could survive or not, it's surprising to see ticket and even your name appeared on top of the list. Turns out that there might be bias in random forest variable importance measurements. Specifically, continuous or high cardinality variables such as name or ticket in our case tend to result in a higher probability that by chance those variables happen to predict the outcome well because a variable with more splits that are tried will appear more often in a tree, resulting in a higher variable importance. Feel free to read more on that topic, but next time when you train your random forest model, maybe it's not a bad idea to spend a little bit more time inspecting the variables just to see whether they make sense or not. Alright, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll see you next time.